Floyd Smith. Get down. Get down, Floyd Smith. So in a warm Friday night in the summer of 1958, when I was a ten-year-old kid growing up in the Spokane Valley, my six-year-old brother and I looked up when we heard our dad come into the living room. He was carrying his Texaco roadmap, and our hearts sank because we knew that he was planning the Sunday drive. <laughs> Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and guests, if your memory doesn't jolt at least a little bit at the mention of the Sunday drive, you're probably on the younger side of the generation gap for those of us here who are a bit more seasoned. Back then, nearly every suburban family took a Sunday drive every week. The Sunday drive was exactly that. The entire family got into the car and drove somewhere. Our destination that week was Stepto View. <laughs> if you've never gazed on that scenic wonder, imagine a colossal rock sticking up out of the Palouse not far from Colfax. That's it, a big rock. <laughs> Sunday afternoon, we all piled into the family car, a 1953 Plymouth Belvedere four-door sedan dark green with a genuine vinyl green and white plaid interior, scientifically designed to capture and hold all of the summer heat. <laughs> we looked like most other families on the road that day. In the front seat, my dad was wearing dress slacks, a short sleeve white dress shirt with a narrow clip-on black tie and a gray fedora. Next to him, my mom was wearing a bright summer print dress. In the back seat, my brother and I were slouched in misery with his coffee cake. He enlivened our Sunday drives every week by becoming violently carsick repeatedly. That's why we had an empty two-pound Maxwell House coffee cake lined with a couple sheets of newspaper on the seat between us. It was just as wonderful as it sounds. <laughs> we made it to Stepto Butte. Got out, looked at the big rock for a few minutes, and got back in the car to drive home. I was dozing in the hot back seat, leaning as far away from my brother as I could get when it happened. Suddenly, the car began to swerve back and forth on the pavement. My eyes popped open, the tires were squealing, my mom was screaming, and my dad was shouting words I had never heard him say before. He slid the car to a stop on the shoulder of the road and began to have a fit in the front seat. He was slapping at himself and thrashing around, still shouting. I saw his knees go up above the steering wheel for a few times. He shoved the car door open and leaped out onto the pavement, where he began flailing his arms and hopping around maniacally, still shouting. The fedora flew off of his head and was trampled underfoot. He tore his shirt off and flung it onto the ground while my mom said, don't tear your shirt, don't tear your good shirt, please. He dropped to the ground and began rolling back and forth. His feet were kicking on the pavement and turning in three or four little circles. My brother and I were hanging out of the back window of the car, agog with wonder at the most exciting Sunday driver we've ever been on. He saw them first. He peeked it and said, wow, look at those bees. But they weren't bees. They were yellow jackets, about a half dozen of them flying around and stinging my dad. As he had been driving along with his elbow propped on the window ledge of the car, he had scooped a little swarm of them into the sleeve of his shirt. <laughs> Did you know that when yellow jackets become agitated, they get extremely aggressive and they can sting you repeatedly? That was by far the most interesting thing I ever learned on one of our Sundays. <laughs> Eventually, they quit stinging Dad and flew away. He lay there on the pavement, moaning softly for a few moments. Then he got up, struggled into the remains of his torn sleeve shirt, stuffed the clip-on tie into his pants pocket, put the crushed, dirty fedora back on his head, and got in the car. He sat there, staring straight ahead, silently, his hands, his knuckles, white on the steering wheel, trembling slightly. My mom looked over and said, 
Well, at least nobody got hurt. <laughs> seemed like an hour. <laughs> then he turned back, jerked the car into gear, and we squealed onto the tape <laughs> and back for Spokane. My brother and I were still struck dumb with amazement at what we had just seen. He was so surprised he didn't even get sick. <laughs> and we never again took a Sunday drive, at least that summer. After a few days, my dad was okay, and he actually began to joke about what had happened to him. I forgot about it because the years rolled on and the memories receded into the past, until one day in the middle 1980s, when I was watching the TV news, they were doing a story about a cultural phenomenon that was sweeping the nation. As I watched the video, I realized I had seen that before on that hot summer day in 1980. As he had been rolling and spinning on the pavement, my button-down conservative dad had invented breakdancing. 